Hello, Brittany Ricketts here, CSU student, to chat a little bit about what's been going on with the buzz of Fort Collins ranked voting, and who better to chat about it with than, it, than Eric Freed, co-chair of Fort Collins ranked voting. So, Eric, will you just tell me a little bit about what is ranked voting? Well, people may have heard that there's a, a measure on the April 5th ballot to change the way we conduct city elections. Right now, you just vote for one candidate for mayor and city council, and you don't have to get a majority to win. So the problem is that people have one with as little as 30% of the vote. If you have a lot of candidates, you split the vote up. Someone doesn't have to get a majority to win. That's plurality voting. Ranked voting is a little different. You, you rank the candidates in your preference order. So if there are three candidates, you rank them one, two, three. It's really that simple. And, and what happens with ranked voting is if nobody gets a majority of votes, instead of electing someone with whatever percentage they have, you drop the last place candidate and you have a sort of instant runoff right then. You look at who the voters put second for the, on that ballot and you reallocate those votes to the voter's second choice. So in a sense, the last place candidates dropped, everyone else moves up one spot, and then you see who has the majority. And so that's ranked voting. It's really not that complicated. It's, you know, if you had to choose an ice cream flavor and you had three choices, you'd rank them one, two, three, put them on the ballot. That's all it is, really. Go ahead. Great. Go and so, you know, we're here at this point of there's three votes, there's three people, that adds a little bit more to the election. We're used to kind of this two-person ballot. Um, and what if you don't want to vote for three? What if you really have that one gung-ho official that you'd like to represent? Right. Then you can just vote for one. You don't have to vote for all three. It's not going to invalidate your ballot. What it, what it is, though, it means that if your candidate is eliminated in that first round runoff kind of thing, then your vote wouldn't go on any farther because you didn't specify a second choice. We use the analogy to a traditional runoff system. A lot of places you have to get a majority to win. If no one gets a majority, you come back in two months with a runoff election. Well, if your candidate wasn't in the runoff, you could choose not to vote in the runoff. And so your vote wouldn't be counted in the runoff. That's your right to do that, but you'd be giving up your right to make a second choice. So it's the same thing with instant runoff or ranked voting. You don't have to rank more than one. It's to your advantage to do so, but no one's going to put a gun to your head and make you do it. Mm -hmm. So it seems as though in this situation, we see our officials being elected with 47% votes or 49% votes, you know, less than majority. It seems as though even though your even though your candidate is, you know, top of the polls for for the two-person ballot, that this would would make it a more of a real majority in the elections. That's one of the main advantages of ranked voting. Um, right now you can have similar candidates split the vote and someone else sneak in and win the vote who is not the preference of the majority. I can give you a very good example. In Hawaii last year, there was a special congressional election, a bunch of Democrats running, and they got about 60% of the vote, but they split it in a number of ways. Republican candidate came in with less than 40% of the vote, and they won, even though the majority clearly favored a Democrat. So that really wasn't representative. Um, and, and with a ranked voting system, you pretty much have to get a majority to win rather than having similar candidates split the vote. Um, whoever has the greatest con support, the consensus candidate, will win eventually in a ranked voting system. Great. So, Eric, what are the main advantages of ranked voting? Well, we've touched on one, that the winner will represent the majority better than our current system because um, you don't have vote splitting anymore. Secondly, you get a more authentic, you get more information from the electorate. Instead of just choosing one and maybe not even their favorite candidate, you get more information on who they really like. So the ultimate, the outcome is, is a more authentic representation of the electorate. Um, it avoids splitting the vote, which means it does not, uh, more candidates can run for office without being spoilers. Um, and it also tends to lead to more positive campaigning, a better civic dialogue. If I want to be the second choice of your voters, I'm not going to attack you and do smear campaigns. I'm going to respectfully disagree with you where we disagree. And it also tends to reduce the influence of big money in elections and empower the grassroots more. Great. So we hear about this spoiler effect that's going on um, with our electors. What, what exactly is a spoiler effect? Well, probably the best example would be the 2000 presidential election where you had Bush versus Gore and Ralph Nader ran. And Ralph Nader only got about 2% of the vote but that was enough to keep Al Gore from getting a majority. Um, most of the people who voted for Nader would have voted for Al Gore as their second choice if they had a ranked voting system. Um, but we didn't have a ranked voting system, so those votes went to Ralph Nader instead, and that let George Bush become president, even though the majority wanted Nader or Gore. So that's a spoiler. And the problem with the spoiler effect is it, it deters candidates from running. In our current city election, there were actually two candidates who already dropped out, one mayoral candidate and one city council candidate because they didn't want to take votes away from someone they thought was a stronger candidate and then help the opposite candidate win. So with the ranked voting system, you no longer have that problem. Anybody can run for office because you don't get splitting of the votes, and that would enable more people to run for office. A good example is students. Um, students at CSU and Front Range feel pretty unrepresented in city politics and feel pretty unhappy about the three unrelated rule and other issues. 
But a lot of students are afraid to run because they don't want to be a spoiler. They're not likely to be the winning candidate. They might take enough votes away. So they don't even run for office. And so with a ranked voting system, there's no reason not to run for office, raise whatever kind of issues you want, maybe not get a majority, but make a strong showing and impact city politics. And because of that, the Associated Students of, of Colorado State University has endorsed the ranked voting initiative, as has the Front Range um, Community College student government, because they see the advantages of it and they understand that if this passes, then students will be able to be more involved in city politics without playing that spoiler role. So it's great that we're seeing it in our local community starting to be endorsed in kind of the grassroots areas. Where has it been endorsed and, and who else is really pushing for ranked voting? Well, in our community, it's been endorsed by the, the, the two student groups I mentioned. It's been endorsed by the League of Women Voters of Larimer County. They're a very nonpartisan group. They study issues in depth, and they think this is just a better system. It's been endorsed by the Northern Colorado Central Labor Council because they understand the similar advantages to that. Um, a lot of individuals have endorsed it. Both of our state representatives, Kefalos and Fisher, and our state senator, Bob Bacon, have endorsed it. But we've also had some conservatives endorse it because we've really tried to reach out to them as well. It's not necessarily a liberal or conservative issue. Um, Steve Urash, who was a Tea Party candidate, who dropped out of the race in District 2, for one. He's endorsed it as well as Mal Hilgenberg, who's one of the Liberty leaders, a Tea Party leader, um, and some other folks on that regard. Around the country, um, the Utah Republican Party, for one, uses ranked voting, which really puts, um, puts to rest the idea that this is just a liberal idea. And in Utah, when they have a vacancy in the state senate or state assembly, they used a ranked voting system. There's actually several members of the Utah state legislature who are elected through a ranked voting system. Um, around the country, there are some other cities who use it. Um, Minneapolis, Minnesota has used it. San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley, San Leandro, California have used it. Tacoma Park, Maryland. The state of North Carolina just had a, for their first statewide election using ranked voting for judges. And in the next year or so, it's going to be coming online in Santa Fe, New Mexico, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, a number of other places, Portland, Maine. Um, in fact, just today, the Hawaii legislature, Hawaii State House voted unanimously to adopt a ranked voting system. So it is spreading. Um, it's different, but as people hear about it and think about it, they a lot of times they go, oh, that's a great idea. Why didn't, why didn't we think about it? Why don't we do that already? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm really glad to hear that it's starting to catch on and people are really getting excited about being able to have the potential to elect more people um, and have more options going on. So how do I get involved? How does a student get involved? How do, does the community get involved? I'd say the best thing is, first of all, you can go to our website, which is pretty easy to remember. We did it on purpose. It's www.fortcollinsrankedvoting.org. You can donate. You can sign up to volunteer. You can request a yard sign. You can endorse the measure. We need, you know, we're looking for lots of people to endorse it as well. Um, we have our literature now out. We're going to be starting to walk door-to-door -door in, in targeted neighborhoods starting next Wednesday. So CSU students and others can get literature and walk around the dorms or their neighborhood. They can talk to their friends. Um, we're making phone calls to targeted voters. So we're trying to convince people that it's a good idea and that they should vote for the system. So we need volunteers, we need money, we need endorsers, and we certainly welcome CSU students and others to take as much of an active role in the campaign as they want. Great, great. Well, more than anything, word of mouth right now for this April 5th election. That's true. It's a very short time frame. That, that's, that's a challenge. So people will get ballots in less than two weeks. And so we, we need to get the word out. It, like I say, it is different. So a lot of people, when they hear something new for the first time, they just sort of reject it because it's scary. So we have to convince people, or at least explain to them what it is, that it's really rather simple. There's a lot of benefits to it, and it's something that Fort Collins, we hope, will embrace. As simple as choosing your three favorite ice creams. Basically. <laughs> as easy as one, two, three. Easy as that. I would like to add, since I didn't mention before, that this came up totally through the grassroots. The reason it's on the ballot at all is because we had a whole bunch of local volunteers and we collected 4,000 signatures. And um, some of them weren't validated, but there were enough to get it on the ballot. So it came up from the grassroots because a lot of people, when they heard about it, thought it was a good idea. So you've mentioned Ralph Nader and Al Gore in that election for the progressives. Where has it helped out conservatives? Well, I think the best example was the recent gubernatorial election last year when there were two conservative, major conservative candidates running. There was Dan Mace, Republican, and Tom Tancredo on a third-party ticket. And up until the very end, the polling showed that Democrat John Hickenlooper was going to get less than 50 percent of the vote which would mean that a majority voted for one of the conservatives, but still they got John Hickenlooper instead. Um, and that wouldn't have been fair, a representative of the electorate. And with a ranked voting system, what people could have done is they could have ranked, let's say, Tancredo first, if that was their choice, and Dan Mace second. And then when Dan Mace was eliminated because he got less votes than Tancredo, those votes would have rolled over to the voter's second choice. Presumably Tancredo, you would have added him up. He very well may have had a majority. Now, if we had a ranked voting system, the whole dynamics of the race might have been different, as opposed to it being a foregone conclusion that because conservatives were splitting their vote among two major candidates, then Hickenlooper was going to win. Um, now, I personally preferred, to be honest, Hickenlooper to Tancredo, 
but I really prefer a system that uh, affect or that accurately reflects the voters' choices. And if that's a conservative, well, then that's the way it should be. Yeah. Where else are we seeing ranked voting? What other organizations are using this? It's actually more common than a lot of people realize. There's um, there's a lot of associations that use it, like the American Political Science Association uses ranked voting. Robert's Rules of Order rep recognizes ranked voting as a good way to do it. There's about 60 colleges and universities that use a ranked voting system to elect their student government. Uh, organizations like uh, the Oscars, for instance, this year they used a ranked voting system to select the best picture for the same reason, to find out what the majority really preferred and not what the single largest minority preferred. Um, they also use a form of ranked voting to, elect, to uh, select the Heisman Trophy winner in sports and the most valuable player in baseball. So it actually is used more often than we realize. It's not that uncommon. And people use it in their everyday life, too. You know, if you're with a group of friends and you want to go out to a restaurant, you see who likes which restaurant. If they can't have their first choice because someone's a vegetarian or doesn't like this, where else would they go? So it's actually more common than most of us realize. It's, it's not that different, really. It's just a matter of becoming aware of it and thinking that it is a better way and we can do that. So let's say April 5th comes by and ranked voting passes. What happens next? Well, the first time we would use the ranked voting system would be in the 2013 city election because we have elections every two years. And so what would happen is the city clerk would then have to go through the logistics of actually implementing the system, coming up with the ballot that makes sense, and coming up with the procedures. Not that difficult. Uh, the reality is the city already uses an all-mail-in ballot system centrally counted, which is what you really need to do for ranked voting. So it would be on the ballot in 2013. We would work, we'd, we'd work with them, so with the League of Women Voters and other civic groups to help them do a voter education campaign so people know what to expect. So then we think there'd probably be more candidates running in 2013 because we, we would have eliminated that spoiler effect. So you'd go into the voting booth, and instead of just picking one, you'd look through the list of candidates. You maybe have to do a little bit more education of who all the different candidates are. You'd rank the candidates in the order you like, and you'd vote. And I don't think it would be that different. It would be the same all mail-in ballots. You'd still fill in the bubbles, but... Uh, You'd have, you'd have more choices and it would be a more authentic election result. Well, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> well, that's what we think, and we hope that that's what the majority of people think as well. Great. If you'd like to get involved, check out Fort Collins, rankedvoting.org, and don't forget to vote on the April 5th ballot. And ballots will actually be in the mail within two weeks, so you can vote anytime after you get your ballot. If you don't get your ballot because you didn't vote last November, contact the county clerk so you can get your ballot. Um, or drop by our office at 614 South Mason Street, just across from Avogadro's number. Vote for your favorite color. The instant runoff way. Instead of voting for just one color, you get to rank your top three. Well, purple is the best, but if I can't have purple, then I want blue. And if neither of those wins, then I guess I could live with yellow. Now let's count up everybody's votes. Under instant runoff rules, it's not enough just to get the most votes. You need a majority. More than 50% of the votes. So, purple's ahead, but it only has seven votes. It needs at least 11 to win. So we eliminate whoever's in last place. Sorry, yellow fans. We're going to your second choice. Two more for pink. One for purple. But no one has 11 votes yet. Still no majority. Bye-bye, blue. blue. Three for purple. Two for pink. And we have a winner. The instant runoff way.